pretty decent for a sewing motor. Yep, spindle uh, works pretty good. There's a little, there's a little knot in it. Um, I got to take that out. It's uh, a tenth of a millimeter over about six inches, and um, this mill only has th this adjustment. There's no knot adjustment, so I don't know if there's some, there's some crud built up in the um, dovetails here. Maybe if I change the position, uh, it could have something to do with the turret. No idea. But this little motor, which is uh, not even really warm, just with a couple clamps. And uh, I, I tried to put it in the original hole there, but um, it actually worked out better just to hang it off the side of here because of the belt length. Um, and then I... <laughs> I have my junkie controller. This is getting ready to short out when the chip lands on it. Have to get that into a box. The fan uh, for these console motors, the fan helps out tremendously because the uh, the MOSFETs get pretty darn hot. So uh, uh, this is this is a, this actually has like five broken blades on it, and I vaulted it down to like ten volts, so it's quiet. But uh, it's it's a little bit out of balance. But yeah, uh, so uh, console sewing motor can uh, power this, which is uh, my new toy. Here it is, my new mill. 1600 pounds of rigidity. Here's the little sewing motor, mounted up with clamps as usual. I've got my touch DRO. I probably spent way too much time on this over-engineered tablet holder. But it seems to be working okay. I've got the vise on here that I bought at auction for I think 75 bucks. It, there's another vise and uh, it, it, it doesn't have any thrust, uh, it doesn't have a thrust bearing in here so it doesn't have quite as much clamping power. Uh, I've temporarily mounted some glass scales so I've got the X and the Y. They're oversized. This is somewhat temporary. I'm, I'm kind of scared to cut them. I'm going to have to cut them though, eventually. But this is working right now. So I've got the old X. Here's the Y. And um, there's a, there was a couple issues with it. Um, the... Uh, the mechanism for the fine feed adjustment is a little wonky and uh, I'm not real sure I like it. Um, I'm also not sure how to DRO the, uh, the quill. So uh, yeah, I've got a couple ideas for that but I haven't quite figured that out. The, um, the spindle oiler, this is like a drip feed and it mostly was just feeding the, uh, the quill here. So I actually put a wire wick inside of here that drips down onto, there's like a piece of like cloth or something, some kind of like spongy material that sits over the bearings. And I think the bearing's getting better lubrication now. There's very little backlash. I haven't done any adjustments of the Gibbs or anything, but there's very little backlash in the uh, about six, seven thou in the, um, the Y and on the X, uh, there's a little bit more. It's got a power feed, which is func it's functional. Um, the uh, most satisfying thing and the least satisfying thing, so the, the knee. Um, you can't flip this wrench. I don't know why they did it like that, but you have to completely take it off. But for some reason, it's a really wonderful fit. So every time I take it off, I get this, <laughs> which is, which is fantastic. 
Um, down in here, uh, I changed out, I, I just put these four millimeter uh, push fit right onto the copper. There was six connections and two of them just seem to be hanging out in space dr dripping on the ball screw and because there's no metering in the system all the oil would just go right out those two and and it didn't seem like any of it was making onto the waves so i put these uh these flow control valves in here and i can close them or or change the flow and um <laughs> i have this uh old uh peristaltic pump that I made like five years ago um, and I could just hook that up to the drill I'm gonna uh, improve this I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do um, I, I this was leaking also so I just took the old the old pump sat right here so I took that off and um, the uh, the casters that were on here were highly questionable so I put these um, the, these uh, I don't know what they're called they're like uh, I could link to them if you're interested, but these actually worked really well. I was surprised um, because they the, the wheels seem very insubstantial, and it, it has also these uh, these nuts that run through all the way through to these bolts, so I can level it here and take the weight off these if I want to, or I can just kind of distribute the weight around a little bit. So I had to mess with that. That was quite a bit of work. I had to cut the old casters off, and then uh, weld a plate on here and. These were a little bit wider than this, so I couldn't get my, my bolts through, so I had to actually weld a, a, a three-quarter inch plate on the bottom here. Uh, this is just a shelf liner hung up with magnets. Seems to be working okay. And um, I, I have this magnetic uh, refrigerator magnet material and I've just uh, attached some uh, aluminum flashing on top of that to keep the oil. But th this padding, it seems like it absorbs the oil and then the whole thing curls up. So I'm, I'm hopeful that the aluminum will keep it flat. And then uh, I guess the other thing I'll say is I put this piece of uh, flake board uh, uh, screwed into the wall here. So I've got all my original collets and then I got all these R8 collets with it. Oh, that is the other big thing. So, the um, the, the the big problem with uh, the R8s are really really tight. S some of them fit okay and they pop out. Some of them, like it, it, it seats, but up at the top is real tight. So it doesn't even the taper doesn't even engage, and you really have to get it in there. So, I actually tried lapping it a little bit, and I think I affected it somewhat. But it, it, it's something I'm going to have to address at some point. Is maybe the biggest irritation that I actually have with the with the machine right now. To give you an idea of how differently sized the motor is, this motor is five inches tall and about four inches across. This is the original motor back here in the corner, and that thing is thirteen inches tall, about eight inches across. It's bigger right here. So this is two horsepower, uh, single phase, and I don't have 220 in here yet. That's something I got to do. But um, the pulley system sucks, so uh, I decided to swap it out and get variable speed control. And uh, man, the thing is working like a champ. So the other update is um, I uh, <laughs> I decided to sharpen some end mills, and uh, I have it clamped onto this. Uh, angle plate here and it's working really good um, I, uh, I did an end mill today and even though the whole setups reversed I actually think that's better for the end mills so um, yeah I still qu haven't quite figured this out but right now I have this clamp as a stop let me loosen the turning bit so that clamp is effectively my depth stop and um, I have to make a more permanent version with an adjustable screw that kind of sits out this way so I get a fine adjustment in and out but yeah that actually did pretty good and this 
pretty crappy wheel. This is just, I, this isn't like resin or anything. This is just like aluminum, embedded aluminum or something. It's already wearing out. Um, I did it all on this crappy wheel and uh, it turned out pretty good. And it's actually cut pretty good. And the, um, <laughs> the handle for the, for the ball screw feed is just a, uh, is yet another clamp. So how many clamps do I have here? One, two, <laughs> three, four, five, and then six. And then there's one on the side here, seven. And then there's two clamping it down to the steel table. So <laughs> it only takes nine clamps and you can make your own tool and cutter grinder. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave them down below. And thanks for watching.